back to the pit stop. It is season 12, episode 11. It is Bring Your Child to Work Day. Guess who's cracking the how? <laughs> She's a woman! Crack is whack, but Cracker is whacker. Monet is black, but Bob is blacker. How are you, girl? <laughs> I'm doing so great. You know, I saved this wig. Um, I thought I was going to see you in person, and I spent like six hours on this wig. And so wearing it today, it's just like, okay, I'm finally giving in to the crisis. And I'm admitting I'm not going to see you in person. It's just so oh, sad. Great. Listen. I will see you at some point early in 2021. That's the real oh, season. Absolutely. Thing. Cracker, can you believe we are almost at the end of this ride? Season 12. We're like at the top, what is it, five? Yeah, I guess so. I'm not good at math. That's why I do drag. Okay, is it just me or did it feel like there were 97? drag queens on this season of Drag Race. Well, that's because they all had so much personality. I also love at one point RuPaul was like, this is the best top six we've ever had. And I was like, excuse me, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right here. I am right here. You know I did the pit stop, bitch, you know. Okay, so last week, no one went home. Yeah. And Gigi's like, I'm not feeling it. I'm not into this. Like, what do you think about that moment? Well, we've seen it before. It happened on my season in season 10. Um, mm -hmm. But the thing is, like, I understand the feeling because you are so exhausted. You have welts from your duct tape. You have burns from your fingernail glue. Like, it is just th the first reaction that you have. And it's unfortunate. I'm with Gigi on this. Like, yeah, it's great. The fact that you still stuck around, that's, um, that's good for you, mom. Also, bitches gotta go home. Okay, can I ask a shady question? Yeah. Okay, Jackie and Heidi were both saved. Or is Dr. That... Jackie and Mr. Heidi. Yeah. <laughs> is that fruitless? Like, yeah, we're saving them, but do we really think one of these girls is gonna win? Like, oh wow. I mean, I didn't think about it that way. But I do get I do get the frustration of being tired and wanting bitches to go home. I have that, I have that on television, I have that at Thanksgiving. It is a brand new day in the workroom, and it is the time we've all been waiting for it, the puppet show. What's funny is um, how Jackie can volley like Serena Williams. She is yeah. just, she is unflappable. When she's not thinking and she thinks, oh, this is not important, uh, she is red D. Whether she's doing the yeah. Kitty Lure Challenge or, I, 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 I wish I had that mindset. She just stops caring and it's perfect. So as a viewer, what do you think of the Puppet Challenge? Do you love the Puppet Show? I love the Puppet Show. You have to be observant. It's the reading challenge and you have to do an impersonation. So it's like a reading snatch game. And I think that's like, if you can bring that, you can do anything. Can we talk about like Gigi Good's Puppet Show? I love that like the only person laughing at Gigi's Puppet Show is GG good. Yeah, I think that's the fear. That's what I think that's maniacal laughter. I do not think that she is truly <laughs> amused by herself. She's like, oh, yeah, that, please let yeah. me out of this situation. Sometimes when people are uncomfortable, they just start laughing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> also, the thing that, that I feel like Gigi's getting herself in trouble with, she does this a lot. Gigi's like, all right, I gotta do fashion. She hits her reference button. Like, it'll just look like something you already know, and you'll love it because you already know it. She's like, I gotta yeah. be funny. All right, it's time to be a bitch. That's it. If I wanna be yeah. funny, I'm gonna be like, what's your name? Greg? Well, your mom's a piece of sh And she's like, nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> humor but she's formidable and that's what's funny about it is that she is so good the only time she struggles is when she announces in her own head that she's gonna struggle do you know what i mean does that make sense oh you, you mean inner saboteur i've heard of her i've heard of her <laughs> so rupaul agrees with you jackie wins the meaning challenge and she is now assigning the order of the show she is right in the lineup she is the yep. HBIC, the head bitch in charge. The HBIC, the head person in charge. Or is she? Because she's like delegates the task a little bit. And it, it's so that funny. She's true, like, yeah. who wants to do what? And, who, and everyone's like, I want to be right in the middle. Like, okay, Goldilocks, but this is not that fairy tale. <laughs> First of all, if I was Jackie, I'd think to myself, Jada and Gigi are the top two. Jada, Gigi's doing the best, then Jada. I would put them in the two worst positions. Maybe I'm shady, but I'm like, listen, mom, I am, I'm not here to make this easy for you. 
I'm not here to make this comfortable for you. I'm gonna make it hard for you so that I can, is that horrible? Rue brought you here with an expectation that you fight tooth and nail for what you want. And she has said several times directly to people, if you are not thinking strategically, if you are not careful with your decisions, then why are you here? When I, when I say tooth and nail, bitch, when I leave, I need a manicure and I gotta go to the dentist because my teeth and nails are ruined from clawing and biting and scratching. To be fair, it had nothing to do with Drag Race, but uh... <laughs> Another thing about that is it's not directly mean. When you put someone first, you are also giving them an opportunity to open a show. And so I think yeah. I, I think there's an opportunity just as much as there's a challenge. When, when they announced special guest judge Whoopi Goldberg in my home, I screamed. Yeah. I literally screamed. This is what was crazy to me is that uh, Jackie, the, the queen of nerddom, uh, queen of New York evening life, as she puts it, remembers her from Star Trek, which is a, like, if I'm going to remember Whoopi Goldberg for something, I'm not going to be like, oh, you mean the one from Star Trek? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Folks are like, Color Purple, Sister Act, Ghost, Karina Karina, Long Walk Home, even Rat Race. She's like, Star Trek. Getting advice from Whoopi is like, talk about a masterclass, but yeah. the nerves of being on RuPaul's Drag Race and performing in front of Whoopi Goldberg is like... I just think that Whoopi gives the most incredible advice. And I've been kind of awkwardly trying to give that advice for a long time to people. But she says, don't try to be funny. Just tell people what's going on and what's in your head and who you are. The, the, the tip she was giving to Heidi, the tip she gave everyone. And also like, girl, this was sponsored by Waterworks. I mean, every girl gets on stage and like, all right, I'm doing a Wobu show and Whoopi Goldberg, you changed my life. I probably would have would have been done have been done the same thing. But also, yeah. <laughs> Mama, at the same time, we you don't want to go home this week. Time is up at Jada S's Hall. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'll be here all okay, week that, because I can't leave I my home. <laughs> yeah, I'll be here all week because I can't leave. <laughs> Let's talk about these performances. So the first one was Jackie. My first thought was, are we watching a TED Talk? <laughs> yeah. Immediately, I was like, I shut down. But then she turned it around and she brought it with the second pair of glasses. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, for me, it was, it was good. I don't know that I would leave that show being like, you know what you gotta go see. Yeah. But still at the same time, it, she did a good job. She went more earnest than like, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I, it, because it came out of her and it was earnest, like I appreciated it while I was watching. I knew what I was watching and she delivered uh, on my expectations. Speaking of <laughs> in comes Crystal Method, who is as good <laughs> as a person can be. I mean, this performance was next level dumb. It was SAT scores oh. 300 dumb. What do you think of Crystal's show? I thought, I mean, we literally can do the split screen right now and show Rock'em Sakura doing a high kick into a fart. And the judges being like, please leave that at home. And then we have literally shitting upon l'étage. That's French for the stage, because this is educational. Oh my um, God. Just, we just have Crystal about the shitting on the stage. As the great poet laureate Nicki Minaj would say, shit did doin' them. They, they really did rock and roll. Rock was like, kick, fart. And they were like, don't you ever, ever, bitch, do that on this stage. Cut to dump, dump, dump it up. Hey, dump, dump it up. Okay, so Heidi comes out and is doing, to, okay, in her defense, what Heidi is doing is actually very reminiscent of what some of Whoopi shows, where Whoopi right. plays all these characters. But also, on the other hand, Whoopi is an Oscar winning actor, and Heidi in Closet is Heidi in Closet. This performance was. It's, it's a no for me. It's a no for me. Yeah, well the thing is like, Heidi is at her best when she doesn't know that the camera is rolling. You know what I mean? Yeah. When she thinks that it's off time. And I think Jackie has that same thing too. And I think this was just too planned. And that's where it was just, it lost the Heidiness. I mean, her show might've might been five minutes, but I felt like I was watching it for like 16 minutes. I was like, this oh. is, this has got to stop. It must've been hard to do it and it was yeah. hard to watch. Jada's face, her reaction was just like, 
the whole time. And I was like, all right, uh, it's over. And now enter Gigi good at being mean to people. Gigi was just, I was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Went right for that man's credit score, right? <laughs> I was like, I was like, okay, now we're going to hell for bad credit because uh, I got a couple of seats saved, Miss Thing. <laughs> and by the way, he could afford front row seats, my darling. He can't be doing that bad. Gigi, she she flipped that bitch switch real quick. Yeah, but that's a, that's the thing that you it it happens also a lot in Snatch Game when people get cornered. They attack the people around them. This is like a the yeah. frightened animal rule of comedy. But there was some good stuff in there. Some of her write, some of her writing was good. Yeah. Let's talk about probably the the worst performance of the week. Jada Essence Hall. It is it is a funny story when it's like to your phone, to your friend, to your mom. But it's just like when it's when it's an audience, it has to be it has to be sculpted a little bit more. And they have to know you first. So introduce yeah. yourself as more than just a drag queen and then get into the to the scat I would play. say introduce yourself as more than just a drag queen who pisses themselves. Hello, right. my name is Jedi Essence Hall. I pissed myself and I'm gonna tell you the story. Which well, actually, actually is kind of funny. That would have been that's funny. That's funny, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that's, you have that story too and I've heard you tell that story before. You peed yourself, I've peed myself. You just But gotta... I also told the story at the very end of my special. I did. Right. 50 minutes of comedy, and then the very last five minutes, I said, by the way, here's a story. It wasn't like, hi, everyone. Anyone else pissed themselves in the room? Which, again, that actually is kind I of funny, too. I it's funny. <laughs> so I guess, I guess the question really here is, it's like with pizza. Like, how did you manage to go wrong? It is a peeing yourself story. How did you make it not funny? Because it should have been. You know what? Bringing it back to pizza is the delivery. Oh! oh! Oh. <laughs> you Damn. Get I'm, you know what? Thank you. I'm done. I'm <laughs> leaving. I will never, <laughs> ever say anything better than what I just said. Motherfuckers, <laughs> be real out here in these streets. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. What I want to say at the end of all this is that um, this is hard. Comedy is the hardest thing in the entire world. And it's because laughter, it's the one of the hardest things to fake. So when you are sucking, you are asking the audience to do a lot of work for you. It takes really seasoned comedians years to pull together five minutes. So we're on the main stage. Category is the color purple. How appropriate. Yeah. Bum, 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 bum. Exactly. Bum, dum, 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 <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Da, da, da. You show is ugly. Um. Yeah, category is, you show is ugly. The first look is Jackie Cox. I like this look. The judges thought it looked a little craft, like arts and crafty, but I didn't mind that at all. Especially, you know, when you are talking about these girls pulled these outfits together in a snap before they got here, I think it is okay for a brand new to the Rue family girl to, you know, have a little artsy craftsy. It shows that you can do shit. And this shows her versatility too. Yeah, absolutely. And and I will stand a little camp on the runway. Every time I see successful camp on the runway, I'm like, yes, remember, camp is part of drag still. Crystal is in this like Ferdinand the Bull look, which is so cute. Oh, actually, this is based off the artist Nick Cave, who is a really incredible artist. He does these bodysuits that are made of materials. So when you walk in them, they make music with, and so you would hear like the rags rubbing together. And so I thought this was not only like kooky and crystally, but also just a, a, a pointer to how smart she is. To me, it kind of looked like uh, uh, where the wild things are a little bit. Yeah. I did not like her shoes. I wish that she had snapped the heel off of the shoe. So they look like hooves. Ooh. Ooh, I like that. Heidi is in this purple dress. It looks yes. nice. Everyone's like gagging. I was like, it looks fine. The thing is like Heidi shows up in this dress and you're like, that looks good. And then Jada shows up in her purple dress and you're like, can everyone else leave? Can right. everyone else leave? You're blocking the view. Okay, I have a question. Gigi Good an says this is loosely based off of Daphne. Is that loose? It's called cosplay. This is the costume. It didn't seem right. that loosely based to me. What did you think about that? 
However, it is a dress, and she has worn a tailored coat for almost each and every runway uh, to date. So I was glad to see that variety of her, from her, and it had a like a bigger sense of humor to it than yeah. uh, some of her other outfits. So I was like, oh my, this is this is her showing her soft, fun, cute side, and her like, hey guys, like I saw cartoons too moment. So I I, I like this from her. I think it, it softened her image for me a little bit. And let's talk about the, in my opinion, one of the best looks of this episode was Jada Essence Hall in this Beyonce inspired. It's like Beyonce and Selena got together. And Moo Glare in... showed up at the party too. Yeah, and he was like, let's do a project. It's just like, it, she is so statuesque and so stunning. To be fair, I always make a test in my head, like, how fierce is this outfit? Would uh, uh, a lady in a different shape still look fierce in it? But I think that yeah. any queen would look fierce in this outfit. Any body shape would look gorgeous in this it's true. in this silhouette. So Cracker, what was your favorite runway tonight? Okay, my favorite runway was uh, definitely Jada. And uh, I'd put Jackie so close to that, but um, I thought Jada was just, she sets the bar. For me, the top two are Jada and Crystal and Crystal mm. could have taken over the top if she had different shoes. My least favorite was Heidi, just because I thought everyone brought a story to the stage and she brought a store to the stage. So after the judging, we find out Crystal has won this challenge. It is her first win of the season. Yay or nay? I don't know. I'm, I'm like, uh, the standards of it. Like, we got on the stage. I was like, is this our, is this our winner? I don't know. So for the outfit, I would say a win. I thought that Jackie's show was better, and I thought that um, Crystal's outfit was better. But also, Mama, it, it, what it, what, do we have to ask ourselves what is this about? Is it about the outfit or is it about the challenge? And I don't know that Crystal's outfit was way better than Jackie's, but I do think that Jackie's show was substantially better than Crystal's. Yeah, and I think, I, for me, I, I lean challenge. And so I think uh, uh, that Jackie could easily have won, you know, but- Welcome to the stage, I lean challenge. Okay, so then the, they're in the so the bottom two is Heidi and Jada, and the song is 1999 by Prince. First of all, should have been Purple Rain. Why was it not Purple Rain? I don't get it. So what do you think of this lip sync? Like, what do you think about these girls doing 19 or or as Courtney would say, 1999? Well, I agree with all the girls that were watching the lip sync. You know, from uh, those confessionals, they're saying, "Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be?" They're both doing great, but uh, there is no doubt that when uh, Jada pulls out that prince wig, reveals a prince wig, yeah. it, it's over. And especially when she kicks those nine foot long Naomi legs up in the air, it's the, the grasshopper is out and, and the battle is done. KO. I was hoping she would pull out like a white ruffle collar and then like a guitar out of nowhere. Yeah. So Jada wins the lip sync and we must bid Avi the same to Heidi. I don't think RuPaul's spoken this like Passionately. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. Of, of any girl who's ever gone home. I think because Heidi is America's sweetheart. One of my first notes is like, there is no doubt that Heidi is the narrator of the season. She has the best confessionals and it's not because she's trying to be funny. It's just because she is funny. And Rue essentially tells her, if you take that to LA or New York, you will ne'er have to go back home again. And I, the only thing you'll have to worry about is your taxes, bitch, because you about to be making some money. Yeah, RuPaul best is that bitch, you about to be rich. I was really touched by that. I thought that was incredible. Cracker, you are so amazing. Listen, I have some of the most genuine laughs of my whole entire life when I hang out with Miss Cracker. I love you, you're hilarious, mwah. Mwah, thank you, mama. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. And thank you so much for tuning in to the Pit Stop at Home Edition. Don't forget to join us next week where we will be reviewing episode 12 of season 12 of RuPaul's Drag Race. Do you want everything RuPaul's Drag Race at your fingertips? Then head over to YouTube now and subscribe to the RuPaul's Drag Race channel. And you will get all the episodes of everything you ever want, including brand new episodes of Whatcha Packin'. Hi.